gastrointestinally speaking. But I look at that phenomenon and then I can't help but just say, well, if we're trying to push the glucose into the kidneys, if we're trying to block the glucose from coming in from the guts, why not just eat less glucose? Uh, it is not an essential molecule anyway. No, I'm not saying don't eat any, but let's just – for the person who has to lower their insulin, just eat less glucose. It is not an essential um, uh, net nutrient in humans. Focus on the two macronutrients that are essential, fats and proteins, and now you're going to create a pretty effective strategy. So that right there is kind of my – best recommendation or maybe simplest, most easily remembered, most palatable recommendation is sort of threefold. It's prioritize protein. I'm a huge advocate of someone ensuring they eat sufficient protein to maintain all function. Now, I don't even just mean muscle and bone mass. Uh, so ensure they get enough protein. So prioritize protein, control carbohydrates. I'm not saying don't eat any. But make sure you're, you're being smart about the quality of the carbohydrate and how much you're eating. And then uh, fill the rest of those calories with fat. Let, don't be afraid of fat. Let fat fill those gaps in calories. Now, all of this, I submit, can be considered um, an aspect of fasting. So I like to break fasting up into two types of fasting. A caloric fast, which is when the person is truly not eating any calories or even drinking any calories. They're just drinking water or you know club soda in my case, which I just have become addicted to as I've gotten older. That's how I know I'm getting old because I used to hate this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the next case, on the other hand, so the caloric fast and then what I like to call a nutritional fast. And I define this as a person eating food, so they're actually consuming calories, but these are calories that have a minimal effect, if perhaps no effect, on insulin. And minimal effect is protein, no effect is fat. And so if they're focusing on those two macronutrients, I contend that they're reaping much of the benefit, not all of the benefit, but much of the benefit of fasting, which is defined as a state where insulin is low. These early um, nutritional biochemistry, um, nutrient biochemistry professors would define a fed or a fasted state based on insulin. If insulin is high, the body is in a feeding state. It is storing energy. It is inhibiting autophagy. If, the, if insulin is low, the body is using energy. It's sharing the energy. It's not trying to con um, conserve it. It's using it. It's sharing it to be used um, by, by the high metabolic rate organs like brain, kidney, heart, muscle. Uh, and... and and, and so it's this mobilization of energy. Again, that can only happen when insulin is low. So both of these states, caloric and nutritional fasts, enable that fasting state and, and activation of autophagy I didn't mention. But the nutritional fast is unique because you can't fast forever. You have to take in energy, especially if someone is um, – uh, very athletic and engaging in very frequent and intense exercise. The last thing you want is for your body to run out of its own energy, so run out of fat, which some athletes can do, that it has to start breaking down its muscle in order to get, provide energy for the body. And that only will happen, someone will only typically be in, in a pronounced muscle burning mode, like actual chronic pathological muscle burning, when they've run out of fat. And of course, uh, that doesn't happen very often here. But we have, those are my two methods of, of sort of defining a fast, the caloric fast and the nutritional fast. What they share in common is that both have a low in, the both are a low insulin state. That's a, that's a really interesting explanation of everything. And that kind of leads into what would be your philosophy maybe on the time frame of these fasts, right? So everybody fasts at some point because we're sleeping, right? We just talked about how important that was. So everybody kind of intermittent fasts because they're not eating every two hours all day, every day. So what, what's your take on, like, what would be a, a, a reasonable, appropriate window? Yeah, so uh, th that's, a, that's a big question, and, and I'm a little reluctant to answer it just because I don't want someone to take my answer as any sort of gospel um, here. But I, I'll enough. say what— <laughs> I'll say I'll let's I'll say what I do. Um, so what do I do with fasting? I have um, typically two um, full, like genuine caloric fat, twenty-four hour fasts per week. And in those instances, I'm drinking water sometimes with electrolytes, depending on how I'm feeling. If I'm feeling a little sluggish, I'll make sure I have a little potassium chloride and and, and sodium chloride. Um, and maybe even a little magnesium glycinate on hand to just kind of tap into my water. Um, and that will help me get through it. But usually they're pretty easy um, to get through. Uh, and 
so anyway, for me, it's two 24 hour fasts. Every other day is an 18 hour is an 18 six. So it's a time restricted okay. eating where I, I rarely will eat breakfast. Um, but I do sometimes and I, and I don't hold, try to hold myself to some standard partly because I am active. And if I've had a hard day the day before, if I had a really hard leg day, it always ends up being leg day. If I ever eat breakfast, I will wake up and I will eat some eggs. Um, and eggs are my go-to, um, food just for the sake of ease and and quality of fat and protein and, yeah, and, and egg, nature's multivitamin and comes, <laughs> yeah yeah right well said eggs i consider i consider this kind of a divine ratio um where there's this one-to-one by mass of, of protein to fat and that's what you see typically in a steak a one-to-one by mass not by calorie number uh, calorie number because of course fat has m- more calories than than um than protein does. And I even hate counting protein as calorie. I don't think we should ever look at protein as a caloric source. Um, I think it gives the wrong impression of protein being an energy. Protein is not an energy in all but the most extreme instances. Um, it, energy is carbohydrate and fat. Protein is building. Uh, so I don't like giving protein calorie number. I think that's, I think it sort of creates a, a misunderstanding. But nevertheless, by mass, this mix of one to one, I, I think there's something kind of divine there, I, and I think that we're, we're smart if we base our strategy on that. Even with regards to muscle recovery, there was a really cool paper published looking at um, egg consumption, and they had some group of athletes. They yeah. actually looked at muscle protein synthesis that was eating just egg whites and in, in isocaloric, so same amount of calories, and the other group was eating egg white with the yolk and so less overall egg white and more of the calorie um, coming from the yolk and that group had a greater muscle protein synthesis greater muscle recovery yeah i think i know about the study you're talking about that 